Welcome to the Next Generation Technology webinar series. Today we will do an overview on the NGT architecture. Presenting today is Doug Wilson. Doug is a technical software consultant for BMC and has worked on DB2 since its beginning. He has also worked on NGT since its inception around 2005. The live chat is open if you have any questions, however, you do have to be logged into a Google account to access it. We will try to get to as many questions as possible today, but if we do not get to your question, please contact your BMC account representative or software consultant for further inquiries. And now I will turn it over to Doug to discuss NGT architecture. Well, thank you, Tom, and th uh, thank you everybody for uh, joining us the week before Christmas. Uh, I'll warn you that I'm in a, in a stage of a cold that's starting to cough, so I'll, I'll be on the mute button and hopefully spare you that. Uh, so we're going to have a brief overview of the NGT architecture because it is different. So we're going to talk about uh, where it's different and why it's different. And I expect this to, to be less than an hour. So getting right into it, well, actually before I get into the, into the architecture itself, I want to talk a little bit about the, the, the history of the software. Because as John, as, I'm sorry, as Tom said, the, the NGT is about 10 years old but the software that it's based on is much older than that. Uh, it comes from what was formerly the, the CDB software, and it uh, is now NGT. So, so NGT stands for Next Generation Technology, and, and what I hope you get out of this presentation is that, that that's more than just a name. It, it, it is, there is a significant difference, that, which is why we called it the Next Generation. So going back in the beginning of reorg, back in, in the 80s, uh, reorg processed one table space at a time. There maybe was some parallelism possible, but, but not a lot. So if you wanted parallelism, you've run multiple jobs at a time. And load balancing was always a problem. If one table space was bigger than the rest combined, which, which is common, then in the end, you had one job running. Uh, you may have quickly got through the others, but, but the one would run a while. Uh, the software that that is the base of NGT is is code where uh, nearly every innovation in DB2 utilities came from. Some of the big ones, for instance, is wildcards. What IBM later implemented as list defs. Uh, this this code has always always used wildcards to do more than to, to specify more than one table space at a time. It was also the first to do a safe reorg, which is reorging to a shadow copy. Uh, actually, it's always been that way since the beginning. And that, of course, led into online reorg, which it also did a couple years before anybody else. Uh, it always has done real-time decisions on whether something needs reorg or not, even before real-time stats. Uh, real-time stats made that process a lot more efficient, of course, but it's always uh, it, what it has not done is based a, based a decision on run stats because it, it seems silly to run run stats, which is very expensive, just to see if reorg needs run or not. Um, and built-in automation, I'm not going to talk a lot about that, but you have always been able to customize the process as it runs, and it's always been based on a no-sort reorg. So, so these are some of these are some of the architectural differences, but one of the main ones that we're going to talk about next, which is why it's called Next Generation Technology, <clears throat> and, and why it came to be is servers. So what happened was things got things started getting really big. I'm not going to read any of this slide, but you see the idea. Uh, when I first started with DB2, a million row table space was considered huge, and now billion row table spaces are common. So a lot has changed, but the thing is reorg did not change. It's still pretty much doing the same thing it always did. <clears throat> so for the rewrite, the what we wanted to change was the we, they were always multitasking, but if you were reorging a, 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 a segmented table space with an index, you're really just going to use one task, maybe two, and the rest are going to set idle. So the first thing was let's Let's do multiple table spaces at once. If, that, if that's the case and we have tasks available, let's go ahead and start up a second table space while the first one's still running, and a third, etc. The next obvious thing is, well, what if this address space that you submitted, the what we call the master, could submit a server job? 
a, a batch job that the, the, the job you submitted can hand off work to. Basically, it's just a way to get a whole nother set of parallel tasks. And that's what the that's the that's the key to next generation technology, and that's why the rewrite. So this is all fairly modern modular code. This was this is about ten year old code, and it's able to process massive parallelism. So I mentioned some of the things that were in the original product, and those are still there, and some more. You, you still have the no-sort reorg, which we're going to talk more about momentarily. The, there's what we call the CDB subsystem, which is the component that captures changes. And we're going to talk a little bit about that. Uh, and it's a very simple to set up, no, no coupling facility configuration, nothing like that. It's, it's just a, a job that runs asynchronously to your reorg jobs and ca captures changes for them. Uh, the real-time utility manager uh, is full exploitation of RTS, so it's better than it ever was and much much more efficient. And we're, we'll do a whole, a whole presentation on this product. It's extremely easy to set up and use. Uh, and internal automation we won't talk much about, but it's, it can be handy, but less so as DB2 has matured a lot over the years, and so has the system. So the need for a lot of what it used to do uh, has gone away. So that's a little bit on the background. Let's jump into the architecture and talk about how it is different and why it's different. And these are the four main topics we'll talk about, and I just have a few slides on each. So the no sort reorg, you might think about IBM's no sort reorg, their sort data no, and it's very different from that. Uh, as, as IBM says, it's good when you have insufficient sort space, which, which is certainly true. Uh, we have had customers buy NGT for this reason alone, because the sort space can be an inhibitor to how many reorgs you run at once, because it takes a lot of sort space to reorg large objects. Uh, and also for IBM sort data node, they say it's for near perfect clustering order. And that's because it's doing random reads based on the clustering index. And that can, that can be inefficient if something's not near perfect. Uh, and I also read that you can't specify every cluster yes with share level change, which would make this for, you know, offline to um, applications while reworking this way. So to contrast that in NGT, it does not do random reads. It's all sequential reads. It's always share level change. Uh, it's, it always runs in that mode. It's not sensitive to normal clustered, unclustered percentages. It, it is true if you, if you give a random table space to NGT, it will affect its, its uh, performance greatly, actually. But that is, that's just not normal. Uh, you, if you do, if you keep things reorganized, which is what NGT allows you to do, uh, you'll probably be in the 90s anyhow when you're reorging. A typical cluster ratio is set to about 90, um, and maybe sometimes tighter than that. <clears throat> and NGT never sorts the data. So to look at a typical reorg, the reorgs that other not non NGT reorg. Uh, this is the process really, the, the heading here says this is the way we've always done it. The, the heading could also say 1984, because this process really hasn't changed since the beginning, other, other than tables can be compressed and, and now changes can be applied. But the original table space is decompressed so that it can be sorted, and then that has to be recompressed back to its shadow. Uh, of course, there's the sort and build of the keys as, as it's inserting into the shadow, it, it captures those keys and sorts and builds indexes. And then it goes to the DB2 log to find changes to, to apply to the shadows before going into fast switch. So that's the typical process that I imagine everyone's familiar with. And I have a note there that the build is risky. If something has gone wrong and you have a missing table row, it will it will effectively be deleted by the index being built. Or if it's the other way around and you have a, a missing record in an index, uh, it'll be added, whether that's the right thing to do or not. So this can cover up problems, and that won't be the case with NGT. So 
So NGT, since it doesn't have to sort, it doesn't have to decompress, it's processing the rows from the original table space directly to the shadow table space. Uh, this is a lot less I.O. and a lot less CPU. I mean, if, if the, the decompressing and recompressing is probably on the zip, but it still takes time and it's not necessary here. The indexes are the, the clustering index is reorged along at the same time. And this this is a roadmap that helps the process to to do the reading and writing of the table space. But basically, there's table space readers that are reading rows and feeding table space writers that are writing rows. Uh, and this process is kept busy until all rows are moved. It'll, you'll get 100% reorged table space, and then the NPIs are processed. And this process of reorging the table space and clustering index created a read translate table. So process, processing the NPIs is, is very quick. It's not like a rebuild, it's, it's much faster. It's actually about the same speed as as updating RIDs. Uh, your your typical reorg, if you reorg a partition or you know a subset of partitions, does not reorg MPIs. It just updates RIDs and leaves them uh, disorganized. NGT will always reorg all MPIs when you reorg any part of a table space. So so that the other thing that's different is the CDB subsystem is capturing changes while the reorg occurs. So when the reorg is finished, we have almost all the changes ready to apply. And the change apply gets to the gets to the catch-up phase very quickly. And then it's just a matter of capturing the ones as they're coming in and fast enough to do the fast switch. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that CDB subsystem process towards the end. <clears throat> Excuse me. So why the no sort reorg? Well, it's a huge DASD savings. As I've mentioned, there's there there are some table spaces out there that they just don't have enough DASD space to sort them. And if they do, there's some other others that have enough large table spaces that they have to be careful which ones they reorg concurrently, just because of lack of workspace for DASD for sorts. Uh, these the NGT uses about 20% of the DASD that a sorting reorg uses, so a lot more can be done at once. Uh, it's more efficient, as it says here, sometimes infinitely better because we have run-in table spaces that just can't be reorged. And because of the server technology and the no sort, uh, we're able to process some very large table spaces and do it and keep them reorganized, do it pretty regularly. And again, MPIs are always organized. These these last two are very important. Uh, people look at reorg to try to save CPU, and probably CPU time by reorg is maybe five percent of the total CPU on your box if that much. So there's not a lot there to save. But your applications probably use 50% of the CPU, and there's a big opportunity to save there. And that's exactly where these save. By keeping MPIs reorged all the time and being able to reorg some of the very large table spaces that you may not be able to reorg, we've had people uh, report big savings, delay upgrades, all kinds of things. And then there's additional benefits besides besides uh, the CPU savings. Uh, there's a the, the the process does the table space index cross check. It's it's like a free check index. Check index should be run regularly, but people don't. People trust DB2 to not have a problem, or check or trust their process to not have a problem. Uh, we fairly regularly find uh, find problems where the index and table spaces don't match. <clears throat> and this can, uh, this this notifies you so you can find what the root cause of the problem is, whether it's a DB2 problem or an internal process problem. The other thing here is that with a no sort is it's simple JCL. There's, there's nothing to allocate and you're gonna see what our JCL looks like and it's, it's, it's very brief and very simple. There's less to go wrong because you're not not allocating uh, large data sets. So 
So next I'm going to talk about server jobs, which are the key to next generation technology. And as this slide asks, why did you invest in a parallel sysplex and data sharing? And of course it's for parallelism and throughput. Uh, if you're reorging a one terabyte table space with two indexes, which probably add up to another terabyte, while a couple of hundred thousand changes are occurring, that's a lot of work. That's a lot to ask a batch job to do. And not only that, you wanted to do it without interrupting the current work and then to catch up with the current work while the current work's going on. That's that's a lot. And and we realized that uh, 10 years ago that, that we were going to have to do something to uh, to speed this up. So that's where servers come in. It, it, this orange is the master job that you submit, and it's just a simple JCL you submit, and through parameters you can allow it to start other server jobs to do work on its behalf. So this might be a typical case where you have two other server jobs, one on, maybe one on the same LPAR, maybe one on a different LPAR spreading the workload across your sysplex. So now that work, uh, more work can get done at once and, uh, and not tax a single uh, LPAR so much. So these servers, they, they can work, process other table spaces and they can process the same table space. If you have a very large partition table space, the master and its two servers could all be processing different parts of that same table space. And if you have a lot of little table spaces, they can all be doing different table spaces. The, the point is that they all keep busy on all the work until all the work is done. So it's true load balancing. You see here a tape server. Uh, this was more important back in the beginning as everything is going to virtual tape, it's becoming less important and changes are coming to, to effectively eliminate the tape server. So why do this? Well, we've talked about a lot of the reasons why, and mainly some objects are just too big for one job. And sometimes, maybe with SAP, you might have thousands of objects. You just want to say reorg the ones that need reorged. They may run in a in a, a second each, but <clears throat> but there could be thousands of them. This this lets you have multiple jobs processing multiple ones at once. So that massive parallelism gets you through both cases. Uh, additional benefits, we've talked about workload balancing. Uh, this is a, NGT uses a, a message queuing process behind the scenes, so there's a lot of advantages to that. And that's why it can use servers. The, the master queues up work to be done and can assign it to servers to get done. Uh, so things like the copy that's done after the reorg of all the parts, that doesn't have to uh, prevent moving on to other reorgs. That copy can, uh, another task can take that copy and write it off the tape while, while the disk servers move on to other table spaces to process. And the last bullet here, I mentioned online schema change. It's really, NGT directly doesn't have anything to do with online schema change, but indirectly it does. And it leads me into a, uh, an example from a customer. Early on into NGT, a customer purchased the products because of uh, reducing outage, but they had an issue they needed to solve. And that was they had a very large, close to a terabyte table space, it's like 400 partitions, and they were hitting the maximum data set size. They were hitting the, the data set size limit, which was completely shutting down processing. So they were waiting for IBM version 10 and online schema change so they could increase the data set size without a major outage. The problem that, that came with, with this uh, new online schema change feature, the pending DDL, was that you have to reorg the entire table space. And this table space was never intended to be reorged as one group. It was intended to be a reorged uh, one or two parts a day. So IBM estimated it would take three and a half days for the reorg to run, and that was after they bought six terabytes of additional DASD to feed the DB2 sort they had bought to, to speed up reorg. Skeptical of that, they asked us what, what we thought, and well, that's what we were designed to do, so we told them to run it. And uh, I say five to eight hours is how long we took. I remember eight, the customer remembers five. 
on the graph I show it probably up around 12, but you see the point. It it's uh it was extremely fast. It ran on a half a day on a weekend rather than multiple days through prime time. The amount of archive logs that would have had to have been read to process the changes would have been enormous if it had run for days. So there was no need for additional DASD, no need for the additional sort product. They they just ran it ran it to completion and solved their problem. And that was primarily because of no sort and and um, the servers. So to sum up servers, uh, they're safe. You don't need any, <clears throat> it's a simple to your job scheduler. You can use any job schedulers. There's no tricks. You don't have to pre-set up jobs that may or may not be used. You simply run your job and watch the return code of the job you ran. Servers always end in a zero. Even if they get an error, they just pass the error back to the master and the master completes with the proper return code. Uh, to answer some questions you may have, what if you cancel a server by mistake? Well, that's okay. That, that work will be excluded. A uh, warning will be given by the master and the master continues on processing the other work. Um, what if you cancel the master? Well, that's what we expect you to do if you want to cancel the job. The servers all realize their master's gone. They all end with a zero as they always do. Uh, all, all the errors that happen in servers are passed back to the master and visible in the master job. Uh, th th that's why they're, they're safe. There's no, there's really nothing to worry about with them. Uh, they use vSAM work files that are shared between the master and the servers, and one of them is called the journal, which is really a detailed output that the masters and servers all write to. So it, it will appear as one big job that had run. So that's something that it's a vSAM file. You can have it echoed back to your job or print it to a data set afterwards or, or let it go, delete it. It's not necessary, but it's everything needed for diagnostics. The next topic I wanted to talk about was change apply and how it's architected different. So the change apply is done without reading the log. <clears throat> the changes are captured directly from the table space being processed while it's being processed. Uh, that does not cause that, that way, well, there's no potential disruptions to, to applications or to DB2. Uh, it, it is a faster process. We get through change apply faster. The whole reorg for reasons we've talked about and this are faster, so there's less changes to capture and apply. And for other things we really haven't talked about in the way that uh, the NGT does the final uh, final drain and fast switch, there's less occurring there, which raises the bar of what can be done without causing a timeout. So if your if your issues with if you're causing application outages with reorg because of drain, that's a problem. That, that needs addressed separately. It's really not a reorg problem. If you're not able to catch up because of the volume of, of changes that are occurring during this time, we can't say that we're going to process any amount of data without, without uh, you know, that we're going to be able to catch up with any volume of data, but we have raised the bar quite a bit. So more, we're able to process more within the time inside of the IRLM wait time and not cause timeouts. And going back to that customer that I talked about with the with the three and a half day reorg, this is the reason they were interested in the product. They were having on their daily reorg of a part, they were having, I don't know, 10, 20 seconds of timeouts and they were looking to reduce that and we did eliminate that. And there, there's another big customer that said, they used to have like 1,400 timeouts a, a week, and it went to zero when they went to NGT. And Doug, one quick question on that. You mentioned uh, NGT may not be able to keep up with the changes. What happens if it can't? Uh, how is your object? What 
uh, what happens at that point? Well, th that's a good question, and the the customer has control of that. But what we do by our view of it by default is that the, the application will win and the utility will fail. So we we by default set parameters to not to not cause timeouts. So if you don't want to cause timeouts, we won't. The util the utility will fail and leave leave the application without timed out transactions. You of course can set values to deliberately cause timeouts, but by default you won't get them. And your object is still in read write the whole time, correct? Always in read write, yes. It's never taken out of read write. It's the NGT reorg is always an online reorg. <clears throat> so the next next topic I wanted to talk about was utility manager. And, and it is a very simple real-time utility management. Uh, this product is really the DBA's best friend. It's extremely easy to set up and configure. It is not a JCL generator. It's true automation. It's based on real-time stats and, and a little bit of other things that it does on top of that. Uh, because it is and it's table based the we ship a table with two records in it and for some that's the only two records they ever need you may add others if you have table spaces with a, a couple known processed a couple known ways for instance we the default criteria will say if 20 percent of the table space has been inserted or deleted then we'll do a reorg to reclaim space well, if you know your table space is randomly inserting and deleting and reusing space, then you probably would put a record out for that table space that, that did not have that reclaim space uh, criteria in it. And that's the table space everybody wants, but, but few have. If you have the opposite extreme where you're always putting records on the end of the table and, and retrieving them or deleting them from the front, then 20% is probably a good number unless it's a terabyte table space. You may not want to wait till there's 200 gig of wasted space to reclaim it. So th there's a couple cases like that where you'll put records in to fine tune things, but but for the most part, the two records uh, do most of what you need. And it's separate from your job. It's it's out there in a table, so you can reorg one table space. It uses that. You can reorg a database dot percent. It will use the right record for each object, or you could say reorg percent dot percent. And for every object, it goes and uses the right criteria. So the, the JCL is simple. There's no special considerations for, for your scheduler. Um, and the criteria is simple to keep up, to maintain. You can do this with SQL editor or, you know, a table editor or SQL, or uh, we provide a workbench, which makes it even easier to maintain uh, the records in the table. You also have custom criteria. There, we allow for a where clause where you can create your own criteria if, if you feel you need that. And again, we'll do a whole presentation on Utility Manager to go into its details. So to wrap things up, the this software is where a lot of innovation has come from and it will continue to occur. Uh, the best thing that happened to, to this software is coming to BMC. This is, uh, it's now part of a, of a complete suite of DB2 tools and utilities and is just getting better from the move. So in summary, this again, this was written about 10 years ago. It's all modular code. Uh, we could do a whole presentation on its on NGT's where clause support that that helps primarily unload and complex unloads to process direct. But it also for reorg discards, you can do complex where clauses on the discard, and even load. You, you're accustomed to to win support, load when positions is equal to something. You can now load when where a column is between or the substring of a column is equal to something or you know complex things like that. <clears throat> um, so being all shared code, 
it's there's less to change to support new new functions and enhancements. Uh, things go into things that change one product uh, benefit them all. I have a little note off to the right. When this was this was rewritten around the DB2.8 timeframe, DB2 version 8 caused a lot of changes to be needed. So and, it, and also was not very quickly adopted by the user community. So it was a perfect time to rewrite this. Also, zip engines became available at that time, so it exploited them in the rewrite. And real-time stats came out at that time. So while it was being re-architected, it took advantage of all that. And all the old features of wildcard support, uh, reorg to a shadow, embedded automation, real, it's all that's still still there. So what what the what you see with large objects, and this is just a conceptual graph. This isn't some study. Uh, I, reorgs that sort uh, are not very linear. As things get bigger, they take longer to run. And NGT, its process is more linear. Things that, the things that get bigger take longer, but put in a more linear way. And that showed itself in that, that use case we had with the uh, 400 part table space where IBM was estimating days and NGT did it in hours. Uh, the IBM curve is is steep. The sort the sort reorg curve is steep. Uh, the NGT I'm, I'm showing it as being a little less efficient on very tiny objects. That gap is is milliseconds, and we are we are addressing that. I think we'll find that even on the smallest of objects, we're going to be right in line. And but but that's really not where that savings isn't going to isn't going to do much. But look good on a, on a benchmark of small objects. The the large objects is where you can stay out of uh, your your license. You, you know where where it starts to affect your your license your charge for the software. And I've talked quite a bit about what the JCL looks like. This is a typical, this is about as complex as it gets because it's reorging a database and excluding a table space. And that RTS keyword says, uh, use utility manager and only reorg what needs reorged. There's no allocation of work data sets or, or sorts data space or any of that. This is a typical job you submit. And that's all I have for today. Tom, I don't know if you've captured any questions or. No, I don't have any more questions out there, but thank you very much, Doug, for presenting and thank you viewers. We do hope you've learned a little bit more about the NGT architecture. As Doug mentioned, there will be more uh, NGT webinars coming. So be on the lookout for those topics and uh, when they'll be live. Thank you very much and have a wonderful day.